Hello to all of you seekers of the truth. The time is getting late. There are still many people who have not awakened to things that are going on in the world, to the incredible deception that all of mankind has lived under, and to the things that God is about to do. In order to help you to really understand where we are as a people, as a human race, I am now going to begin sharing with you the principles of the deep state. The principles that have practically put the entire earth into slavery. I want to begin sharing these with you. It will be probably several uh, videos where I explain these things that I have found. I want to start now with, with this. These are the principles of the deep state. Putting aside fine phrases, we shall speak of the significance of each thought. By comparisons and deductions, we shall throw light upon surrounding facts. What I'm about to set forth is our system from two points of view, from ourselves, the masters of the deep state, and that of the people. It must be noted that men with bad instincts are more in number than the good, and therefore the best results in governing them are attained by violence and terrorism. Have you wondered have you wondered at all about the incredible violence and terrorism we now see unleashed in the United States? That was something that for years and years we only saw in countries in the Middle East. And then we began to see it in other places. Now we see it all the time here. And what is it directed at? The terrorism and the violence is directed at the people who are attempting to destroy the deep state. Again, it must be noted that men with bad instincts are more in number than the good. And therefore the best results in governing them are attained by violence and terrorism and not by academic discussions. Every man aims at power. Everyone would like to become a dictator if only he could. And rare indeed are the men who would not be willing to sacrifice the welfare of all for the sake of securing his own welfare. What has restrained the beasts of prey who are called men? What has served for their guidance until now? In the beginnings of the structure of society, they were subjected to brutal and blind force. Afterwards, to law, which is the same force only disguised. We draw the conclusion that by the law of nature, right lies in force. Political freedom is an idea, but not a fact. This idea one must know how to apply whenever it appears necessary with this bait of an idea to attract the masses of the people to one's own party for the purpose of crushing another who is in authority. This task is rendered easier of the opponent. I'm sorry, this task is rendered easier if the opponent has himself been infected with the idea of freedom or what is often called liberalism. Liberalism. And for the sake of an idea, is willing to yield some of his power. It is precisely here that the triumph of our theory appears. The slackened reins of government are immediately, by the law of life, caught up and gathered together by a new hand, because the blind 
might of the nation cannot for one single day exist without guidance, and the new authority merely fits into the place of the old, already weakened by liberalism. In our day, the power which has replaced that of the rulers who were liberal is the power of gold. The time was when faith ruled. The idea of freedom is impossible of realization because no one knows how to use it with moderation. It is enough to hand over a people to self-government for a certain length of time for that people to be turned into a disorganized mob. From that moment on, we get internecine strife, which soon develops into battles between classes, in the midst of which states burn down and their importance is reduced to that of a heap of ashes. Whether a state exhausts itself in its own convulsions, whether its internal discord brings it under the power of external foes, in any case it can be accounted irretrievably lost. It is in our power. The despotism of capital, which is entirely in our hands. In other words, money is entirely in the hands of the deep state. The despotism of capital, which is entirely in our hands, reaches out to it a straw that the state willy-nilly must take hold of. If not, it goes to the bottom. Should anyone of a liberal mind say that such reflections as the above are immoral, I would put the following questions. If every state has two foes, and if in regard to the external foe it is allowed and not considered immoral to use every manner and art of conflict, as, for example, to keep the enemy in ignorance of plans of attack and defense, to attack him by night or in superior numbers, then in what way can the same means in regard to a worse foe, the destroyer of the structure of society and the commonweal, be called immoral and not permissible? This is saying that we will become traitors of the nations, of the people that we want to destroy. Isn't it okay to do anything if you are trying to destroy an enemy that is attacking your nation? Of course, in, in war, in the laws of war, you have to do what you have to do to save your country. And here... The deep state is talking about using those same tactics within the state itself as a traitor because these people, these deep state actors are citizens of this country, of the United States. They are the ones that have attacked this country from the inside. And as we will see, as we go on with these principles, we'll see how completely they have attacked our country. Is it possible for any sound logical mind to hope with any success to guide crowds by the aid of reasonable counsels and arguments when any objection or contradiction, senseless though it may be, can be made and, which, and when such objection may find more favor with the people whose powers of reasoning are superficial. Men in masses and the men of the masses being guided solely by petty passions, paltry beliefs, traditions, and sentimental theorems fall a prey to party dissension, which hinders any kind of agreement even on the basis of a perfectly reasonable argument. Have you ever noticed that you cannot reason anymore with anyone who believes differently than you, especially in the realm of politics. This is by design. Reason has been cast to the ground. You cannot reason anymore with anyone. My goal is for the light to shine into the darkness so that people will begin to understand how they have been deceived, and then of their own volition, of their own will, will begin to seek for the truth. And then the truth will set them free from the deception. 
Every resolution of a crowd depends upon a chance or packed majority. Oh, really? In other words, would the deep state try to pack political events of their opposition? Every resolution of a crowd depends upon a chance or a packed majority, which, in its ignorance of political secrets, puts forth some ridiculous resolution that lays in the administration a seed of anarchy. The political has nothing in common with the moral. The ruler who is governed by the moral is not a skilled politician and is therefore unstable on his throne. This, this explains why we have such gross immorality in our political leadership class of the deep state. He who wishes to rule must have recourse both to cunning and to make believe, to lies. Great national qualities like frankness and honesty are vices in politics, for they bring down rulers from their thrones more effectively and more certainly than the most powerful enemy. Such qualities must be the attributes of the kingdoms of the people, but we must in no wise be guided by them. We, the rulers of the people, we, the deep state. Our right lies in force. The word right is an abstract thought and proved by nothing. The word means no more than give me what I want in order that thereby I may have a proof that I am stronger than you. Where does right begin? Where does it end? In any state in which there is a bad organization of authority, an impersonality of laws and of the rulers who have lost their personality amid the flood of rights, ever multiplying out of liberalism, I find a new right to attack by the right of the strong and to scatter to the winds all existing forces of order and regulation, to reconstruct all institutions and to become the sovereign lord of those who have left to us the rights of their power by laying them down voluntarily in their liberalism. Did you notice here he said, amid the flood of rights ever multiplying out of liberalism. Have you noticed the new rights we constantly have? First, the right to abortion, 1973. Then the right to homosexual marriage, 2015, I believe it was. And then, now the right to becoming transgender, the right to being called whatever gender you think you are. And those are just the big ones, the crazy ones. How could a society founded upon principles of justice and righteousness like the United States was, how could that society ever devolve to the point of accepting abortion on demand, killing babies in the womb on demand, and now, oh, I forgot this new right they want, the right to kill a baby afterwards, after it's been born, if the baby's not good enough for the parent or whoever else might decide. How did this country get this way? By the implementation of these principles of the deep state. So let's go on. Our power and the present tottering conditions of all forms of power will be more invincible than any other because it will remain invisible until the moment when it has gained such strength that no cunning can any longer undermine it. This is why it's so hard to convince people that the deep state even exists, that there are people behind the scenes who actually believe like this, who actually want to destroy them. Let me read this again. Our power and the present tottering condition of all forms of power will be more invincible than any other because it will remain invisible until the moment when it has gained such strength that no cunning can any longer undermine it. Can you imagine what this power would be like once it becomes visible and once the people really understand 
what has happened to them? Out of the temporary evil we are now compelled to commit will emerge the good of an unshakable rule which will restore the regular course of the machinery of the national life, brought to nothing by liberalism. The result justifies the means. The end justifies the means. Who do you know who says such things? Which is the party of the deep state? Let us, however, in our plans, direct our attention not so much to what is good and moral as to what is necessary and useful. Before us is a plan in which is laid down strategically the line from which we cannot deviate without running the risk of seeing the labor of many centuries brought to naught. This plan has been in place for centuries, literally for millennia. This plan is deep. This plan has slowly worked its way through the nations of the earth. In order to elaborate satisfactory forms of action, it is necessary to have regard to the rascality, the slackness, the instability of the mob, its lack of capacity to understand and respect the condition of its own life or its own welfare. This has been the case especially of the poor black race. They have not understood that they have been used. Today, there are people awakening, people like Candace Owens and many other brave black individuals who are telling their people, rise up from the slavery, rise up from the lies. It must be understood that the might of a mob is blind, senseless, and unreasoning force ever at the mercy of a suggestion from any side. The blind cannot lead the blind without bringing them into the abyss. Consequently, members of the mob, upstarts from the people, even though they should be as a genius for wisdom, yet having no understanding of the political, cannot come forward as leaders of the mob without bringing the whole nation to ruin. Only one trained from childhood for independent rule can have understanding of the words that can be made up of the political alphabet. People who are part of the deep state have been trained from youth, trained from when they were young to understand these things and to understand the slavery that they intend to bring mankind into. A people left to itself, to upstarts from its midst, brings itself to ruin by party dissensions, excited by the pursuit of power and honors and the disorders arising from them. Is it possible for the masses of the people calmly and without petty jealousies to form judgment, to deal with the affairs of the country, which cannot be mixed up with personal interest? Can they defend themselves from an external foe? It is unthinkable. For a plan broken up into as many parts as there are heads in the mob loses all homogeneity and therefore becomes unintelligible and impossible of execution. It is only with a despotic ruler that plans can be elaborated extensively and clearly in such a way as to distribute the whole properly among the several parts of the machinery of the state. From this, the conclusion is inevitable that a satisfactory form of government for any country is one that concentrates in the hands of one responsible person. Without an absolute despotism, there can be no existence for civilization, which is carried on not by the masses, but by their guide. Whosoever that person may be, the mob is savage and displays its savagery at every opportunity. The moment the mob seizes freedom in its hands, it quickly turns to anarchy, which in itself is the highest degree of savagery. Have you noticed the mobs of anarchy that have taken hold across this country? It is, it's a quickening pace that we've seen in the last few years. The pace quickened very much during the time of President Obama. I believe that Hillary Clinton 
was going to usher in the deep states Messiah, the deep states despot, whoever that person was chosen to be. Behold the alcoholic animals bemused with drink, the right to an immoderate use of which comes along with freedom. It is not for us and ours to walk that road. The people are bemused with alcoholic liquors. Their youth have grown stupid on classicism and from early immorality into which it has been inducted by our special agents. Hmm. They've also been the ones who have pushed the immorality, the pornography, the sexual freedom into our culture. This has been done through tutors, lackeys, governesses in the houses of the wealthy, by clerks and others, by our women in the places of dissipation frequented, frequented by the people. And the number of these last, I count also the so-called society ladies, voluntary followers of the others in corruption and luxury. Our countersign is force and make-believe. Only force conquers in political affairs, especially if it be concealed in the talents essential to statesmen. Violence must be the principle, and cunning and make-believe the rule for governments, which do not want to lay down their crowns at the feet of agents of some new power. This evil is the one and only means to attain the end, the good. Therefore, we must not stop at bribery, deceit, and treachery when they should serve towards the attainment of our end. In politics, one must know how to seize the property of others without hesitation, if by it we secure submission and sovereignty. Notice the description of what has been done in order to gain the vote of all the politicians. Bribery, deceit, treachery. Our state, marching along the path of peaceful conquest, has the right to replace the horrors of war by less noticeable and more satisfactory sentences of death necessary to maintain the terror which tends to produce blind submission. Just but merciless severity is the greatest factor of strength in the state, not only for the sake of gain, but also in the name of duty. For the sake of victory, we must keep to the program of violence and make-believe. The doctrine of squaring accounts is precisely as strong as the means of which it makes use. Therefore, it is not so much by the means themselves as by the doctrine of severity that we shall triumph and bring all governments into subjection to our super government. It is enough for them to know that we are too merciless for all disobedience to cease. Far back in ancient times, we were the first to cry among the masses of the people. The words liberty, equality, fraternity, aren't those the words that America was founded on? Words many times repeated since these days by stupid poll parrots, who from all sides around flew down upon these baits and with them carried away the well-being of the world, true freedom of the individual formerly so well guarded against the pressure of the mob. The would-be wise men of the people, the intellectuals, could not make anything out of the uttered words in their abstractedness, did not see that in the nature there is no equality, cannot be freedom, that nature herself has established inequality of minds, of characters, and capacities, just as immutably as she has established subordination to her laws. They never stop to think that the mob is a blind thing, that upstarts elected from among it to bear rule are, in regard to the political, the same blind men as the mob itself, that the adept, though he be a fool, can yet rule, whereas the non-adept, even if he were a genius, understands nothing in the political. To all these things the people paid no regard. Yet all the time it was based upon these things, that dynastic rule rested. The father passed on to the son a knowledge of the course of political affairs, in such wise that none should know it but members of the dynasty, and none could betray it to the governed. 
As time went on, the meaning of the dynastic transference of the true position of affairs and the political was lost, and this aided the success of our cause. In all corners of the earth, the words liberty, equality, fraternity brought to our ranks, thanks to our blind agents, whole legions who bore our banners with enthusiasm. And all the time, these words were canker worms at work boring into the well-being of the people, putting an end everywhere to peace, quiet, solidarity, and destroying all the foundations of all the states of the earth. As you will see later, this helped us to our triumph. It gave us the possibility, among other things, of getting into our hands the master card, the destruction of the privileges, or in other words, of the very existence of the aristocracy of the people, that class which was the only defense peoples and countries had against us. On the ruins of the eternal and genealogical aristocracy of the people, we have set up the aristocracy of our educated class, headed by the aristocracy of money. The qualifications for this aristocracy we have established in wealth, which is dependent upon us and in knowledge for which our leaders provide the motive force. Our triumph has been rendered easier by the fact that, our, that in our relations with the men whom we wanted, we have always worked upon the most sensitive cords of the human mind, upon the cash account, upon the cupidity, upon the insatiability for material needs of man. And each one of these human weaknesses taken alone is sufficient to paralyze initiative, for, it's, for it hands over the will of men to the disposition of him who has bought their activities. The abstraction of freedom has enabled us to persuade the mob in all countries that their government is nothing but the steward of the people who are the owners of the country, and that the steward may be replaced like a worn-out glove. It is this possibility of replacing the representatives of the people which has replaced, which has placed at our disposal, and as it were, given us the power of appointment. Okay, this is the beginning of the principles of the deep state. These are the principles by which the deep state has ruled the world from behind the scenes in secret. They have not yet come to the power of showing who they are because the people still retain some power. In America, part of that power is the right to bear arms. And so these deep state actors are afraid of millions of men and women with guns. They're afraid to show their faces. They're afraid to reveal who they are. It's important for us to understand the principles of the deep state because there is a war now taking place. And the deep state is one side of that war. The patriots, the people who love their countries and the people who love truth and justice and righteousness are on the other side. The deep state has lied to us about everything. It's time now to throw off the lies. It's time now to begin to understand what truth is and to walk in that truth and to throw off the lies. 